what I'm using for type now. Here's what I'm using the type for in 2012. In my life, I have standardized on Studio Press, which are the child themes of the Genesis framework, and another theme vendor that we're not talking about here, even though they're cheap and pretty, because they're not GPL, which is the WordCamp licensing schema of choice. And boy, am I having way fewer trips this year to West Virginia. And here's what I mean by that. This is the famous West Virginia joke, which mostly is a Boeing joke. My husband's an engineer at Boeing, but there were three people in the car on the way to a meeting in West Virginia. And this joke is on the website at barrydown.com, permanent home. A hardware engineer, a software engineer, and a project manager. And it's mountainous in West Virginia, and the cell service is not so great. And the brakes go out. And they are late for a meeting. And they wind up barely with their lives at dusk in one of those one runaway truck ramps. And they get out of the car, and they can't figure out what to do. And the project manager says, well, of course, we've got to have a meeting and figure out our goals and objectives. And the hardware engineer says, now you were chewing gum, and you were flying a kite last night at the hotel. So I know we've got bubble gum and kite string. I can fix the brakes. We'll be on our way in 20 minutes. And the software engineer says, oh, come on. Don't you want to roll the car back up the hill and see if the same thing happens again? <laughs> <laughs> And before I standardized on theme frameworks that I actually learned about, I spent a lot of time rolling the car back up the hill. So I do standardize on Studio Press, and in particular, I've come to really like the Agency 2.0 theme. Studio Press is busy these days bringing all their themes out in mobile responsive versions. And one of the things I've been learning from the Shop Talk show on my trips to Illinois is that we should be thinking about designing not only responsive, but mobile first, um, which is like next week's thought. For right now, Studio Press is busy bringing out their themes in responsive versions, and I'm hoping they'll take Casara's advice and start bringing out some HTML5 themes, maybe using Roots which I'm really kind of excited to start using. So this is the basic agency 2.0 theme that you see when you're gonna when you're gonna buy it and that's what the demo looks like and I've kind of messed with it and I thought you'd like to see how type and visuals and layout and color can make it look different four ways. There is the March Enhancer site which needs a little extra content these days. That was my mentor until 2003. Oh, that's a book I'd like everybody to read. And that's my mother, who is up there because she thought everything could be solved with an increase in sales. And my view is you can solve everything much better with an increase in margins, even if your sales stay the same. And that's my manifesto, because if all you're interested in is sales, you can compete on price. And in my view, what's wrong with this country is that we are competing on price. And if you worry about margins, then first of all, it gives all us designers a lot more business because we can charge for branding. Also, the Agency 2.0 team. This is a psychic and angel challenger angel channel or that's a Freudian slip because she certainly was a challenge for me um, but I kept I liked this design so I did keep a screenshot my daughter is graduating from journalism school she found a theme on theme forest she liked a lot she said but it's 40 bucks mom and I said well I'll buy it for you if you really want she said well Maybe you could just make one of our, the themes we already own look like it. 
actually the conversation didn't quite go that way. I did offer because we already buy so much for our kids, don't we, when they're in college and before that and after that. And, hey. So this is also Agency 2.0 and the slider. No rounded corners, no drop shadows, just flat. And finally, that's Jerseyville. So, and again, I think I probably need to lay off the rounded corners and the drop shadows. But again, a little bit of a different look. And there are our sponsors. Casera wouldn't do it, but that's Casera's company. <laughs> so what did that leave out? What do you want to know? And you're all still awake. We were told about 20 minutes and then Q&A. How'd I do? Uh, you're, you're at uh, 122. Pardon? We're at, we're at 122. One question. Okay. Why the agency theme out of all of the studio press names? Um, I find it easy to build in other page layouts. I've integrated the portfolio page a number of times. Um, it seems to be flexible, and I've gotten good at it, frankly. I tend to make decisions for extremely uh, philosophical reasons. Either something is cheap or I've gotten good at it. it tends to be easy. I um, tend to kind of shoehorn stuff into what I'm already doing, which isn't really the best approach. And it's one reason I'm going to force myself into the roots theme so that I can kind of break out of it. So it's good to hear. I just realized I don't have the front neck right club thing. My next big project is to shoehorn into the Agency 2.0 theme of another site where the home page looks so totally different it doesn't have any widgets on the front. It's just a big damn tennis ball with some floating lakes. So as a front end, you're more of a front end developer. Um, yeah. The studio decisions this framework frustrate you sometimes when you want to move elements in your design rather than just doing CSS. You have to actually, let's say, take the footer and put it, you know, somewhere else. Does that um, cause problems, or are you able to kind of work around that? Because you don't, or unless you do dabble in some PHP as well. I do dabble in the PHP, and that's why I realized that having having my PHP P be like my Italian where I can just put HTML in it isn't good enough and so on. This is the year and probably the next quarter in which I'm going to really become a PHP developer. Um, and I can feel my attitude shifting already and that's why I'm listening to Shop Talk in the countryside instead of Pandora Radio half the time. Questions? Yeah, what do, we, what do we want to know more about? So what goes through your mind when you when you get a project and you're looking for a, a font to use for like your main like headers and um, content and stuff? Like what, what do you look for um, to kind of go with specific projects? Or do you have like a fallback like like library that you like to use a lot? Um, My first thought is um, is mood or voice. Um, I'm an auditory reader, and uh, if you're talking to me online, you will definitely hear me say, that's your first look, we're typing, did I just hear you say that blah, blah, blah? Um, so I'm definitely looking for the voice. And the second thing, frankly, is, uh, can this client afford for me to buy a new type family? <laughs> Seriously. And although actually very often I will look through what I own first. Uh, and it's really about, um, as a direct marketer would put it, matching the message to the market. Is it elegant? Is it husky? Is it whatever it is? And, and what is the audience expecting? Um, if 
Okay. I would like to say that very rarely is it about my taste level and what do I feel like using today? And now, let's face it, that's a damn lie. Because it's a mixture of the two. Because the audience comes first, the marketing considerations come first, come first, but I am not going to put out something that I can't live with. So, so it's a mixture. I'm going to tell you and I'm going to tell the clients and I'm going to tell everybody that it's about what the audience expects and that's going to drive 70% of the decision and then I'm still a designer at heart. I've still been doing this for 30 some odd years and I'm, I'm not going to give them ugly because I'm not going to give them something that's intentionally ugly. Now